76% of Republicans think Islam is incompatible with the American way of life. I believe Sharia is a mortal threat to the survival of freedom in the United States and in the world as we know it. And I think it's that straightforward and that real. This is not an attack on Muslims, but the fact is the enemy right now is within the Muslim community. A small percentage, but it's there. This is a problem that Islam has. I called upon Muslim leaders to call out and denounce these murders, these terrorists. Decrying violence isn't enough. If we think that there is an undermining now, just wait if Sharia is adopted or utilized by justices in the United States. I get that, 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 that the media wants us to play theater critics and critique every other proposal. What I'm focusing on are my own policy proposals. Now I'm joined now by Congressman Steve King, Republican from Iowa, who has endorsed Ted Cruz for president. Um, Congressman, I saw some comments you had made earlier today in reaction to uh, Donald Trump's proposals to, to proposal to ban Muslims coming into the U.S. You said uh, you didn't necessarily agree with it, but you were glad it opened up space for it to be debated on the merits. Can you elaborate what you mean by that? Well, yes. I mean, the, the politically correct enforcement that's out there in our society has tightened things down to the point where people just walk on eggshells and they're afraid to address the things that are really on their mind. But you talk about political correctness sort of tamping down. I mean, if, mm -hmm. if someone were to say um, we should stop letting Jews into the country and, and people had a reaction against that, would that be an example of that same kind of toxic political correctness tamping down honest discussion? Well, if Jews in the name of their religion were killing Americans, then I think that would be an appropriate comparison. But as far as I know, there's only one religion that's doing that, and it is a segment of the, of the religion of Islam that's doing that. Congressman, so I, let me I don't just stop you right there. Them. Congressman, there was a man named Robert Deere who in court today said he was a warrior for the babies, whose ex-wife talked about his Christian beliefs motivating his desire to attack and murder three people, including a police officer, in Colorado. That man is a Christian. He's an avowed Christian. He appears to have acted on those Christian beliefs to, to undertake that act of violence. I don't think that he's following Jesus' teachings. And, and I, and but I would who are you to say? He says he's a Christian. That's what he says, all right. And, uh, but, I, but that's not Jesus' teachings. Te Jesus didn't teach people to kill. But you're doing um, the exact same thing that every Muslim I've seen on air do in the wake of what happened in San Bernardino. They say they weren't following actual Islam. Islam does not preach hatred and violence and destruction, right? I mean, why is this any different? It, it, you, understandably, as a Christian, as someone of the faith, right, you look mm -hmm. at what happened at Planned Parenthood, you said, that's not the faith that I believe in. Millions well, and billions of... What Planned Parenthood is doing is not the faith that I believe in, but Jesus never ordered anyone to be killed, and he never raised his hand to injure anyone specifically, but Muhammad did, and there's a big difference in this, and so they're carrying on the traditions let, that are centuries old. Let me ask you and, this. Yes. Yeah, I, th this is, because uh, I think what I hear from you is that there's this, this, this difference in kind uh, when we're talking about Islam. And uh, I was looking today, there's a part, piece in the LA Times about a, a, a paper called The Menace back in 1915 that was railing against Catholics. And it said all sorts of things about Catholics. They are essentially a fifth column. They are uh, a crypto uh, uh, fascist. That they, uh, they said if we are compelled to live in this country with Romanists, that's their term for Catholics, the Romanists mm -hmm. will have to be taught their place in society. There were anti-Catholic lynch mobs that came up, huge movements. Was that bigotry, or were they correct back then to look at Catholicism as fundamentally alien and threatening to the American way of life? Well, it's, it's difficult to judge people from 100 years ago by today's standards, but I'd go back into the early middle part of the 19th century also. The Know-Nothings were a yeah. Protestant movement, and they rejected Catholics and didn't want Catholics to assimilate it brought into, right? right into America. Were they right? Uh, I, no, they turned out to be wrong. I mean, me being a Catholic sitting here, you couldn't get me to say that they were right. <laughs> but that's, uh, but, Congressman, but, that's uh, my but point. But I would say this, that here's what's happened. Why are you so confident, let me ask you this. Why are you Catholics so confident that they got that wrong, that we now look with the, 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 the sort of um, benefit of hindsight, we say, well, that clearly that's bigotry. Catholics weren't infiltrating America to bring it down on orders from the Vatican. How can you be so confident that you're correct about the religion of Islam, that it really is different in this insidious way, and 50 mm -hmm. years from now, people aren't gonna look back on what you are saying and put it in that same category. Well, first I would say that 
that Catholics came in and competed with the Protestant work ethic. That was one thing. And, and they did assimilate into the broader society. And a lot of them, especially Irish Catholic, did their best to sound like they were English rather than Irish by dropping the O and the apostrophe. It would be one of the things. They changed their names to blend in more I with the broader society. I can cite you chapter and verse of the literature of that time of people saying these Italians, they speak only Italian. They don't speak our language. Oh. These, these folks that are coming from other places. It sounds mm -hmm. identical to what you're saying about Muslims now. It really does. But you're hearing the imams that are, that are preaching in places like the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. Uh, the, the imam there preached that to the migrants, go into Western Europe, build your enclaves there, breed their women, and do not associate or, or assimilate into the broader society. I, I mean, that, you might call that a peaceful invasion, but that's the nicest thing you can call it. They're, right. not, they're not assimilating, and they're not assimilating I, because Sharia law is incompatible with the Constitution of the United States. And that's an important principle that we need to have a debate about. Last this. question here. You, you, I'm going to have Congressman Ellison on in a moment. You said that he would not renounce Sharia law. What, what do you mean by that? Well, when, when Congressman Ellison takes an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, and, 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 and also, well, yeah, I, you'll get to ask him. I'm glad that he's going to be there to answer this okay. question. And it, it is, which is superior, the Constitution or Sharia law? And, and in Sharia law, by their teachings, is superior to everything else. It replaces everything else. It replaces the Constitution itself. Oh. So you can't be assimilated into the American civilization and accept Sharia law as being superior to our Constitution. It's antithetical to Americanism. Okay. I'm going to talk to him about that. Congressman Steve King, thank you for coming on. Please ask him. Thank you, Chris. I will.